Well, everyone, welcome to this edition of The Mr. Brown Show. Real talk, real life, real choices, helping you make better choices to live a better life and choose well. Let me see if I got my soundboard right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all about choices. And I'm kind of amped today because I've been doing a lot of speaking. Um, I'm going into more schools. I just got back from some churches. Um, and I, I'm just excited about what I get to do. Just did a teacher training with a bunch of t- two, two different professional developments. Actually, three. I, like I said, I've been busy, and I just, I just had a phone call with with an administrator, and I just want to share something. This isn't even aimed at the administrators or educators. This is for parents. Parents, this episode, this rant, this talk. I don't want to call it a rant. I, I, I want to. I just want to speak to you from as a parent and as someone who works with kids. And and my message is this. Please talk to your kids. Converse with your kids. Have conversations with your kids about nothing, everything, and the most important things of the day. We got to be able to talk to our kids about it. And I know some of this stuff is age appropriate, but listen— I just did an episode recently, and I forgot which podcast. I have several podcasts that I, I said this on, but this has kind of been one of a one of my mantras lately. Is this loud voices aren't always right, but silent voices can't be heard. And it's just gonna this can apply to the political world we're in today. Like everything is political, and people are yelling and screaming at each other. I, I, I believe we need to have less accusations and more conversations. But I think we need to have conversation with our kids. Parents, please, this this podcast is for parents. Please talk to your kids because this applies to you as well. Loud voices aren't always right, but silent voices can't be heard. And our kids are drowning with silence from us as adults who know some things and we're not sharing them because we're embarrassed. It's uncomfortable. They need us because they're listening to loud voices. So let me tell you what happened. I had a phone call. I spoke at school last year and they're bringing me back. And last year when I was at the school, um, during the assembly, one of the kids asked me, what, what do I think about pronouns? And I said, wow, you know, um, I, you know, I'll talk to you about that later, but let me say this. No matter what the subject is, whether it's abortion, transgender rights, whatever, gay rights, all these things, at the end of the day, these are more than topics. These are people. These are people that, that deserve respect, um, that we need to honor them because I believe they all have value. And it's okay to disagree with people. You can agree, disagree. We can agree, disagree, but commit to decency, commit to cooperate. But people can have different views. So I didn't say right there what I thought because I knew the person who was asking me had this bent toward if you don't agree with me, then you're wrong. You're transphobic. And turns out it was true. Had a conversation later and blew up whole all the kids that, that believe the same thing, called me names, got on TikTok. And I, yeah, TikTok. And, you know, called, said, I would never respect transgender people. And that's not what I said. And the nice thing is some of the kids who who saw that post retorted back, responded back and said, no, he didn't say that. This is what he said. And w- what I'm afraid of is that the silent voices aren't heard because we don't want to offend a certain group of people. So we just let it go. And so I talked to the administrator about coming back and she said, hey, things were great. Two issues, something, another something I said that one parent got upset about. But then this issue came up and she said, well, please, you know, maybe don't bring up, don't talk about those subjects, you know, transgender, um, sexual stuff or LGBTQ. Just don't talk about those things. So I said, hey, I'm here to serve you. There's other topics. So if the kids bring up those subjects, I will simply say the schools ask me not to talk about those things. And she said, the reason is that the parents in this in this community don't they don't want to talk. They don't talk to kids about these things. And so when it's brought up at school, they're they're upset. They're they're, they, they don't they don't want to talk about it. And my thing is, you have to talk about it, parents. The kids are hearing about it. They're, if they have cell phones, if their friends have cell phones, these kids are watching, listening to stuff on TikTok, Instagram. They're hearing the loud voices talk about these things only in one direction usually. And then by the time we get to talk to them about it, they've made up their minds. They think something's wrong with us because we haven't talked about it. And I'm not telling you which side to be on. I'm saying talk to your kids. If you want your values to get across your kids, even the tough subjects, talk to them about those tough subjects. We've talked to our kids about these things. And our kids in our home are 7 and 11. And we talked about those. And we continue to talk about these things. We started a couple years ago talking about the transgender thing because one of the kids showed up to school who the year before was a girl. This year came back as a boy. My daughter, what is this about? Hey, we had to talk to her about it. Actually, we talked to her before um, the, we heard about what's going to happen. So we talk to our kids about these things. Um, and it can be hard, but listen, I want my kids to be able to talk to me. 
about these things. I want my values, our family values, I want to teach my kids these things. Yeah, it's one thing to pull kids out of your out of schools, and if that's what's best for your family, do that. But that doesn't alleviate you from the conversations about these tough things. And what I think one of the best remedies for talking to kids about the tough things is talk to them about nothing. Let them talk to you about absolutely nothing in the car. Turn off the music sometime. Turn off the podcast. Turn off, and just sit there and willing to be silent in this case to let them talk. Some of my best conversation with my daughter is in the car. Well, she talk. Well, that's not quite true because me and her talk all the time about all kind of things. So we we are talkative people, as she says. <laughs> but you know, many times she leads the conversation when I pick her up from youth group or something because she's talking about everything and talking about this happened, this happened. Pick her up from school. All these things happen, and I let them talk and I listen. And I just don't just be silent. I'm not thinking. I'm listening actively and asking questions. Um, can you clarify this? So she did that, or what? What is that word in Spanish that you learned, or what did you do, and what? What your teacher say? I'm asking questions for clarification because I'm paying attention. Because listen, when you talk and listen to your kids talk, you have conversations with your kids about what we may think is nothing or not that important stuff. They're willing to listen to you when it comes to the tough stuff, the deep things, because you built that relationship over time. Yes, we can act like ostriches, but that has proven not to work. We can't put our heads in the sand and go, oh, I don't want to talk about that because our world is screaming these subjects. They're talking about them. What are your views? And the truth is your kids want to know your views on these things. I remember being in the middle school, we're in a group of leadership kids, and and me and the principal asked this question. These are eighth graders, and they they, they they were starting their sex ed program. And I said, hey, who do you want to learn sex about? Who do you want to hear tell you about sex? How many want to hear from your parents? Every kid raised their hand. They rather hear from their parents than anyone else. But the parents are scared. As a matter of fact, I remember doing another workshop where we actually talked with parents and kids, had them in different rooms, and the subject was sex. It was We did this in Kansas um, because we did sex education there. And we asked the parents, hey, who do you think your kids want to hear from or, or from sex and ask the same things? The parents were waiting on the kids, and the kids were waiting on the parents. Kids were waiting on the parents to bring it up, and parents were waiting on the kids to bring it up. But nobody's bringing it up. So no one was talking about it. And here's the deal. I believe this, this is part of human nature. People will fill voids. If there's a lack of information, people will find the answers for them. People will fill the void. That's just human nature. If, if there's something missing and I want to know the truth, someone is not telling me, I'm going to go find my answer myself. I'm going to fin- figure it out. And the kids are doing the same thing. And I know it's scary to talk about these things, but it's so important. But again, the key to talking about the tough stuff is talking about nothing (laughs) and listening to nothing. And even going into their world, if your kids are excited about some video game and they're always playing, go learn about the game. Who cares if you're ever gonna play it? Let them teach you all about the game because that makes them excited. I was on a trip and I bought my kids a a Wii game. It was at the Goodwill, it was a snowboarding game. I thought it would be fun because we have the old, the Wii thing you can stand on and you can, you know, do all kind of fitness stuff with it. And that snowboard game has that. The game was like three bucks. I'm like, I bought the game. Came back, played it once with the kids. And then they begin to play with it and they start to learn all the stuff, the ins and outs. They are so excited about this game. So guess what? At some point, both me and my wife at some point come and play the game with them, watch them play, let them show me all the tricks, even tried to play the game and let them show me how to do the tricks. I wasn't that great at it. My kids will crush me in it. But the point is, I'm listening to them. I'm going into their world to learn from them. That gives me credibility. That gives me uh, collateral, so to speak, to be able to talk and then listen to me about other things as well. So I, I want to plead with you, parents. There's a lot of topics going on out, out in the world today from, um, you know, the, the CRT stuff that all you, you, you're only going to be successful based on your race, um, um, the transgender, the LGBTQ, abortion rights, all these things that our world is, is all talking about. And the loud voices, again, are not always right. But our silent voices cannot be heard. We need to speak up and talk to our kids about these subjects. Because what's going to happen to some of us is this. We're going to be silent for all these years. By the time they come teenagers, we talk about them, and they're going to be in a total opposite spectrum than we are. And, and we're trying to now fight them about these things when we could have just been talking, having a conversation on a regular basis. Because here's the deal. I've talked to some of these kids about these issues, and my favorite thing when kids already have their minds made up about things is simply to ask questions. Help them take their thoughts to the logical conclusion. And many of them, and then give them a different point of view, and I go, you know, I never thought about that. 
Yeah, because they haven't heard anything differently. They've only heard one side from the TikTok, from all these things. And speaking of TikTok, I, I, I'm, I'm never one to, hey, get your kids off TikTok. You know, I'm not, I'm not that one. I think some of these platforms can be, you can learn a lot of good stuff from them. But TikTok is one I had to get off TikTok because of the violation. I made a whole podcast about that. Uh, you can, I'll put it in the description below in a little link if it's on YouTube. But um, about why I got off, their, their violation of all of, not violation, I said this, the validation of me being on TikTok Outweighed, was outweighed by the validation of my privacy. Like, they violate my privacy. Like, not only do they have access to everything on my phone, they can see my keystrokes. This is in their policy. Not only that, they can connect. If I've never even been on TikTok on my laptop, they still have access to my laptop through my phone, which is bananas, right? Just crazy. So I got off TikTok. And so I would say even this, hey, if your kid's on TikTok, talk about the policies. Ask them they think this is a good idea or not before you take them off. <laughs> and that's the thing. I think sometimes as parents, we hear about these things and we just run at it and go, we're going to do this. No, have a conversation first. At the end of the day, you are the parent. So you can, you know, have a conversation with them, help them understand why, ask them questions. But at the end of the day, you still get to make the choice because the bottom line, listen, this is your phone. If your child is under the age of 18, they cannot be in a contract with a cell phone carrier. You are in that contract. You are. This is your device you let them use. And that's the perspective they need to have, that this is yours. You get to let them use it. Like my mama told me, this is my house, that room you get to use. right? Because it's not, not a mean way, but like a, a clarifying way. To be clear, I think our jobs as parents is a tough job. It's a rewarding job, but we got to stand up and, and make some better rules, I think, some better boundaries for our kids to help them grow in a more healthier way. And the, I think one of the greatest ways to do that is having conversations with them. Um, so please, parents, I, I beg you, talk about some of these hard issues. I know it's hard, but it's beneficial for them long term. It may be hard in the short term, but long term is good. Because I think it's the, the world has changed. When I was growing up, and maybe you as a parent was growing up, there, we had our big three. Our big three were sex, drugs, and alcohol. Those are the conversations our parents struggled to talk to us about. And many of us learned about those three things outside the home and not in the home. What we learned about in the home was don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Never heard the motivation why, never understood the consequence, except, you know, I'll be honest with you, I heard, you know, if you do it, your stuff's going to fall off. You'll get STD, you'll get bring home a baby. Those are the things. But there's more than that. There's emotional things that happen to a guy and a girl when you get involved with someone sexually or even just in deep relationships. So I think we need to have those conversations about all the nuance that happens when these things, drugs. Why do some people use drugs? What happens when you get addicted to drugs? What if you don't get addicted, but your friends get addicted? What if, you know, have those deeper conversations about more nuance and just don't do it. Yeah, that's a command, but help them understand and have conversations about it. Um, those are the big three for us. But now the big three is a little changed. It's changed a lot, I think. The sex, drugs, and alcohol are still there. I would call those, I will put those under, no, I will, I will put it this way. The big three today is substance abuse or substance misuse. I like that term, substance misuse. Sex is still there and then social media. So there's three S's. Substance misuse, like using substances, whether that would be vaping, um, drugs, illicit, illegal drugs, whether that is alcohol, those things, those are substances that are, that are abused. And there's many more out there now that these kids are doing that, that just blow my mind. And then there's sex, of course, you know, that's part of, you know, natural relationships. What, what does that, what does that mean? When's the right time for it? All those things. And then there is the social media is huge because I think some of our kids and even some adults are getting our value from social media. And, and, and the influence is amazing to me that, that you can have people post stuff on TikTok and you got kids willing to destroy their own bathrooms at school. They're willing to destroy their own reputation. They're willing to commit sexual assault over these things that somebody they don't even know posted. It's trended. A bunch of people supposedly are doing it. So they do it to fit in. That blows my mind that you're willing. This is so powerful that they're willing to destroy their own reputation and their future to to get approval for someone they never met. They've never seen. I think that's too much power. That's too much influence. And I, and I say this all the time, but I was talking to a group of students and what, I said this statement. Hey, how many feel like you don't matter? The girls like, I feel like I don't matter. I said, what would make you feel like you more matter if I had more Instagram followers? They are looking to these platforms for acceptance, approval, and affirmation. 
And I believe they should be getting that from their community. They should be getting it from home first, that in our home, to make sure our kids are getting those things. So we all need that. We all need AAA, I call it. You know, affirmation, acceptance, and approval, right? Did I say that right? Yeah, affirmation, acceptance, and approval. We all need that. But they should not be getting that from social media because so much of that is is flawed in a lot of ways. It's not real. The fact that you put, and it's the thing, you put something online, only three people like it. Well, maybe only three people saw it because the algorithm didn't think it was okay. Think about this idea. And I, I'm struggling with this too. Like, I sometimes feel guilty for not publishing or posting something on Instagram that I'm allowing some algorithm to make me feel like I got to do all these things for what reason? For approval, acceptance, to make my business run? I gotta, st- I've stepped away from it sometimes. I can't, can't play that game. I look on my Instagram, I'm losing followers. Cause I'm not posting enough. Well, I gotta start posting more. I don't want to be dictated, controlled by some algorithm that just doesn't have a face or a name. Now, I, I want to be on these platforms to influence people. I want to influence students because they're there, right? These students are there. People are there and I can be a, a platform for influence. I get that. But I don't want it to control me and, and think of, make me think of my own value. No, I, I can't have that. And it's sad that our kids are are dealing with this and we're not talking about it. Parents. Can we have a conversation with our kids about social media and not just how bad it is? Let's talk about some some positive things, some negative things and some things they should be aware of. And here's the beautiful thing about, I think, human nature. Sometimes, parents, we can nag less and have more impact. If you ask your kids a thought provoking question about this stuff and you see that expression, go, hmm, they'll keep thinking about it. But we keep pouring it on and makes them want to reject it because we've been pouring it on. Ask a question, make a point and let it marinate. I mean, let it let it just marinate with them because they will think about it. If it's a great point, they can't deny it. They won't deny it. They may deny it to you because we nag so much. Therefore, they reject it because of the nagging and not because of the point. That's my advice. Hey, talk to your kids about these things, all the aspects of it. Don't just say social media is totally bad. Talk about the positive things that can happen, the things you can learn on it, things in entertainment value, but also talk about the negative things. And sometimes again, asking those questions can help them think it through themselves. Because here's the deal. If you want them to do something, you got to get them to want to do it. I mean, you can make them do it. And I think as parents, we should have that. You're in my house. This is what's going on in my house. (laughs) But if we can... Going to the next level, because we won't always be there, getting them to think about it themselves and getting a a, a practice of thinking things through. If I continue to do this, kind of like that app, if then, then what, right? So if I do this, then this will happen. Helping our kids to think that through. But that starts with a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. Conversations to converse with your kids on a regular basis about nothing, some things and the big things because it really does matter. Whew. I hope that I hope that didn't feel like a, a rant. I, I, just, I get passionate about this because I want our kids to know. I want my kids to know. I'm working with your kids in schools and I'm hearing these conversations. They're telling me all these things and they've never thought about the opposite side. So please think about that. When you give your kids a cell phone, you're letting the loud voices talk to them more than you do. And the loud voices are always right, but silent voices can't be heard. And I kind of look at these cell phones and, and as we used to look at television, when parents didn't want to be bothered sometime, we put our kids in front of TV to, to babysit them, right? Are we not doing the same thing with our cell phones? Are we not giving kids cell phones so sometimes we don't have to deal with them? We can keep them busy. And even I see this at a young age. you got little kids because we're busy doing something. We'll give them our cell phone to play a game. I'm not saying that's all wrong. Our kids play with games on cell phones too, on iPads as well. But we're engaged with what they're playing. We know what they're doing. You ain't downloading anything. They're not watching anybody on YouTube. Matter of fact, my kids don't watch none on YouTube unless we're watching it with them. We take the time to watch YouTube with them. Um, I think it's important. So please think about these things, parents. Um, this is a plea from someone who cares about your kids. I care about our community. I care about our world. And I think parents, kids want to hear from you more than you believe, and they need you more than they know. I think I said that right. It can actually go both ways. Kids want to hear from you more than you think, and they need you more than we know. Both are correct because our kids need us. We need to be there for them, and it helps us all. So, whoo, 
that's that's it. That that was that, that. I hope that was just beneficial. I hope. Uh, I really do hope that parents, you you hear my heart. And if you felt like I was yelling at you, sorry. I guess I'm just passionate about our kids and helping them make better choice, live better lives. And I want. I want to. I want to empower parents because you have such an important role with your kids. I have an important role. We can encourage each other because what we have the gift of being a parent the, the the power we have and the privilege we have is amazing and i think we need to use it so um hey let me know what you think what are your thoughts leave a comment if you watch this on youtube in the comment section if you are listening to this on spotify on, on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, or just go to our website hello mr brown.com hello mr brown.com and let me know what you think so maybe i can make a change in direction maybe i can say some more maybe you can join me on the podcast we can talk a little more tell me your stories how are you conversing with your kids how are you connecting with your kids to help them make better choices to live a better life that's all about because when you make better choices you will live a better life so choose well well i don't have my choose well shirt on i have a consider other shirt on you should you should probably pick this shirt up uh, on the merch store merch link in the description (laughs) till next time choose well oh yeah oh yeah peace